Hi, welcome back. My name is Newman, and this is my life with plants. Uh, today, this is a repotting of a Phalaenopsis. It's a beautiful one. Um, I got this at a local greenhouse. That's a supplier, commercial supplier. Um, it's pretty private, so I'm not able to film there, unfortunately. And um, I'm going to show you the flowers on the screen. It's uh, growing in sphagnum moss. And so are these big ones. But the difference is, is that it's not packed in there quite like this. This is really compacted in there. And uh, that's just choking the root system, <clears throat> in which we will see. Stay tuned. Orchid bark, because I live in Japan, so it's a Japanese supply store. It's just bark, nothing special. Let me just open this up. Never look at what we have here. And so it also includes pumice. Kind of um, coconut choir, small pieces of pumice and bark. I think a little bark, maybe not a lot. But you can might, might as well say that I will be doing like sem semi. Hydroponic, although the growing medium has got cocoa choir and pumice, <clears throat> I'm doing going to do it this way. And the reason why is because, although it's a tropical country I live in, you have to remember that growing them indoors they can get quite dry, and in the heat. So we're looking at temperatures that get right up to 90s. Every day has been over 95, about 95 degrees, 35, 36 Celsius. And that is a lot. I mean, they still want them drying out. They want the orchids to dry out during that extreme heat. They've got to keep moist, slightly moist, or have availability to some water. You can see that this is like utterly compacted in here. I just noticed that the roots are not not doing quite so good, and uh, it lost a lower leaf. Although naturally they do that, and I just thought I don't want to risk it. Not this one anyway, this is one of my favorites. I'm going to give it a little bit of a squeeze so I can get it out because I want to save the pot. Maybe I can't. There will be quite a few dead roots in here, although this is natural, nothing to worry about. You can't avoid it, even after repotting, you will get some dead roots. Alright, let's have a look here. Don't smell bad. You can see here all these roots are died and that would be strangulation air circulation problem no doubt because I have my bigger orchids I just showed you and they are growing in moss but I didn't compact it it's loose in there so 
So there's a big difference. Oh yeah, quite a few. No, it's got a lot of good roots on it. So there will be no problem. I will show the flower of this Phalaenopsis on the screen. So I got this at a, a local grower that's been growing, well, Phalaenopsis for over 30 years. And in the flowering season, I had to go there. It's quite hidden, and uh, they have extra plants just off to the side there on sale for a good price. You could call them rejects, maybe they just haven't got enough leaves, they look a bit out of balance, they didn't have enough flower spikes something like that okay, now that I've taken all of this moss off I'm not left with it's not a bad amount of roots but definitely had a problem in there So that one's gotten spongy too. Mm. Yeah. I've been growing Phalaenopsis for about five years now. Let me tell you a story how I got into it. Working, I was working and we had a customer the customer had a grandmother and she had uh, was talking to me one day she happened to like plants a lot she was talking about her orchids I have all these orchids I have a lot do you like orchids? and I said yeah I like orchids I grow cacti and succulents and those kind of things house, house plants too she said and she just noticed that I had such an interest in plants. She said, well, I'll bring some in for you. I was a bit hesitant because it's an orchid, you know. I didn't have any experience. Just experience in other plants. And uh, she brought them in. It was a typical <clears throat> phalaenopsis with a white flower, yellow center. Another one was a very common one, pink. There was two of those and there was two of the other and took them home. They were very, very dry. They were growing in moss like this, but they were, you could, might, might as well just say bone dry. And they had flower spikes on them and I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a good water. And I did, gave it a good, good watering. Next morning when I woke up, I got a big shock. Was on the surface was all this white fungus growing. And I thought, what's this? Well, this can't be bad. It must be natural. And it just didn't it, just, it didn't take no longer than two days for the whole plant to die. It spread up into the crown and rotted the whole thing. The other one I learned my lesson quickly from that. Started looking at YouTube's channels to get some helpful information about what, what have I what have I done wrong. <clears throat> and uh, the other two, they have the pink. I quickly followed some instructions on how to repot them. I, I learned that the growing medium had, had been dry for such a long time that they were dead and dead and rotting roots in the medium but it had gone bone dry you see and um, at 
one time or another there were spores, fungal spores in there and I just set them all off by watering them and I learned that so I unpotted the two and they, they had one of them had no root system, virtually nothing left. The other one had like two roots. So the other white orchid, that one died. The other pink one died after one more year. And the last one, which brought me all the way to where I am now, is still alive and doing well. And I'm going to show it to you after I'm finished. So I've, I've got the vellum and it's going to come off and I still have these roots that can do some work. Uh, however, I may not need, the, need them. I can probably cut them off. These scissors have been washed, sterilized. I always get a glass and soak them in straight alcohol. They drown in there, drown them in the alcohol. Plus I have several pairs of scissors. These ones are just used for the orchids and house plants. If I'm to go outdoors I will use a different pair. So this has a pretty good root system. For those of you that don't have a lot of experience with orchids, they lose some and they grow some. It's just part of their life cycle like any other plant. If you live in a hot weather climate like me, where you're looking at those high temperatures I was talking about, 90s, 95, you keep them in the shade if you grow them inside. Don't, don't have them in a sunny windowsill in these kind of temperatures. You'll stress them out too much, back them away, back them right away so that there's no direct sun on them at all, but they're just getting bright light, it's just bright light. And then you want to have something that's semi-hydroponic, so that means that uh, there's always a little bit of water in the bottom where they can drink it up, where it keeps the medium moist. Now, adversely. If you get cold winters where temperatures can, you know, get quite cold because you have an unheated room, then you want to be careful with the watering. Actually, possibly have it a little on the drier side and don't leave water in the reservoir. Only if you have a heated room that you can maintain at about no less than 15 degrees and going up to about 20 degrees during the day. Don't know what that is in Fahrenheit by the way. It's probably 70, 75. Now if you're going to go down lower, down to 10 degrees during the day or night and that's like consistently, then you've got to be careful with the watering. Increase the light. Be careful with the watering. You can rot them. Okay, so that is done. I'm going to put it in this pot. And I hope it will do well. But before I do that, I must get rid of this dead stuff here, dead material. So I'll be back in a minute. <coughs> okay, welcome back. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> I got a fan going behind me, but um, <laughs> it's hot. <coughs> got to have some air. I'll get all sweaty. Okay, um, getting back to this root system. So here we are. <coughs> Still got some good roots. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> if you have an outbreak of fungus, or root rot, or something that is potentially harmful, then you want to use hydrogen peroxide. Um, if you, the measurements I know is if you have a liter, about a liter of water, you just add about two tablespoons to three tablespoons of 
hydrogen peroxide <clears throat> that will kill any any fungus that may be present it won't um, it won't kill everything but it will kill a lot you know up to 90 percent but you give the orchid a chance to recover and grow <clears throat> It's good for cleaning wounds and stuff like that. Okay, here we go. You can see there. <clears throat> Those roots will find their way through these holes and go into the reservoir. Repotting. If you have like really, really long roots and you don't know how to get them down in there. I saw somebody that just turns the pot like that, twist, twist, and then the, rot, the roots will naturally find their pocket in there. I'm putting in the medium dry. A lot of people like to moisten it or clean it. I'm just putting it in dry because it, it's easier for it to find its niche, fall into place better other than something that's wet and it may not go between the roots properly. <clears throat> After I'll give it a good water. I'll thoroughly soak it, then I will put the bottom on and then add a little bit more so it's got a reservoir. In case you're wondering, does pumice irritate the root system and damage it? I don't think so. <clears throat> Do I add any slow release? No, nope, because I add a very mild application of liquid fertilizer, but very mild. And then every month, you should, of course, give it a, a flush out. You just give it a good watering with normal tap water. Because you can get build up of salt in there. This part is, as far as I'm concerned, is kind of on the big side. Do not overpot. They will not work. This is very shallow. You can see here. It's a very shallow pot, so it should be fine. I hope it makes a good recovery. <clears throat> and it pushes out some new leaves for me. That's what my hope is. Because it lost one big leaf and it, it shouldn't really. It should have at least three healthy leaves per side of the stem. Okay. The repot is over, now I'm going to show you my oldest orchid. So I'll be back soon. Hey, welcome back. This is my orchid that I was talking about. That is... I rescued... Well, you could call it a rescue. <clears throat> Five years ago, a gift. This is the one that survived. Because it's such an old plant, it has quite a stem there. It has a lot of roots, a lot, a lot of roots. And they're all going into the medium there, all the way down. I have a pot here that can has a slight reservoir of water at the bottom. I keep it slightly moist now. As you can see that you can see by the growing tip there that it's actively growing. During the winter, I will keep it a little on the more of a dry side. 
has beautiful flowers that I will show on the screen here. And it's in a macrame, so it hangs up. It has pushed out these two new leaves here, you can see, and it's kept its older leaves. It discarded a very older, much older leaf that was very wrinkly, but it did the work to give the plant the energy to push through, and it's discarded those. So this is now a very healthy plant. Anyway, stay tuned. I'm going to show you the repotted plant after watering. Okay, here is the ranch lighter. The sunlight is reaching about up to here, about 30 centimeters away, and these phalaenopsis are three feet away from the window. So during this heat, you don't want to get any of that sun on their leaves. You can see that this one has pushed out this nice new growth leaf here. Um, this one is very healthy. This one is pushing out a new leaf. I got one that's sick. You can see here that this leaf is yellowing. Um, I'm afraid I might lose it. And this one here, which still has some flowers on it, amazingly. Got to cut this one off and that one. You can see that you have new growth here. Nice big new leaf coming out. Nice big leaf coming out of this one. And it is in sphagnum moss. The difference being is that a styrofoam or poly polystyrene, um, it's big chips that have been broken up and put into this rather large pot, ceramic, it's half full of the styrofoam, so it's just like blocks, three big blocks down there and it also gives uh, me something to skew the flower stalks um, poles too that I must insert when it has flowers it sticks into the styrofoam holds them up and the rest of it is just sphagnum moss <laughs> yep as long as it's not compacted it works really well as a growing medium thanks for joining me today and um, I will do updates on the progress of that orchid that I repotted. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.